of the, of the prizes. <laughs> Jerry Halliwell's yoga video, uh, DVD, I think it's the latest one in that particular series. <laughs> so if you've already worked yourself up to, you know, you're looking pretty good, but yeah. just a little bit of, uh, flavour, maybe around the arse or breast area, then Jerry can help you out there. Yeah. We got uh, Only Fools and Horses, this is the Christmas special from last year. Um, Jonathan Ross was giving that one on his morning show this morning. I don't know if they're just oh, trying to get him. Um, top uh, of the morning to you from Terry Wogan, that's his, uh, <laughs> 2 CD. I'm sure they were giving that away, as You've well, got though. the likes of Love Theme from Top Gun, obviously Take My Breath Away by Berlin, that's on there. Uh, what else we got? We got The Pretenders, you mentioned there earlier. Alison Moyes on there. Uh, Annie Lennox featuring Paul I Feinle. still call her Alf. Loaf is on there, I'm talking to the meat variety. Oh! Obviously. <laughs> um, Miss Tina Turner on Silent Wings, there's a, you know, an incredible selection there, perfect for saying mum or, um, a, a deaf aunt. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, <laughs> Uh, that's uh, the uh, manuscript features. How's Kids your DVD. aunt? Anyway, how's your aunt? The, the one who farted for five minutes, Carl. Also got the U2D. Uh, not well. What's up with her? Well, she'll have no. the best chat album ever. Uh, that's that's all right. Yeah, yeah, she'll, she'll be alright. Yeah. Okay, guys. So that's the prizes up for grabs. So we were having two conversations <laughs> yeah. there. I I think we're a little bit too relaxed in this show. Sure. I mean, people tuning in will just think, do those three people know they're going out live, or is yeah. that a conversation like between the records? Yeah. I, I, it, it's. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Sounds like, yeah, the record is playing. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. get the record playing yeah. and we're just chatting. Oh dear, what we got, what we got, Carl, what we got, Carl. Carl, 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 Carl. One opportunity. Carl. Eminem. Lose yourself. Back on form there. Absolutely, right. yeah, it's yeah. good tune. Good, good. On XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. Carl Pilkington, more importantly. Carl, come on then. Right. I need some education. I no, need it's Rockbusters. I, rock I need education, I need I some know, education. I know, I know. We've promised some Rockbusters. Educating Ricky, I will be ditching before Christmas. Why? <sighs> it will be going. Really? Why? Because there's nothing it's, out there. It's just struggling. I was thinking on the way in today, I can either do, um, doing something more with Steve, because we've done, like, the Ricky angle. Either yeah. we can do, uh. Um, Educating Steve? No, either like a, a bit of a call my bluff type thing, but it's like a con merchant and I have to like trick you. Okay. Right, merchant, so I'm the I like con it. and the other merchant. And then, yeah. or I was thinking something that you just do, do some work and you have a moan for a bit. Okay. And that's a bit, that, that's like a wine merchant that you just like <laughs> whine on about something. <laughs> Uh, again, just, I, I, I the pun comes first with uh, yeah. you, doesn't it? Yeah. Before it's like that first. Yeah. That's like, uh, okay. I told you I'd come up with a couple of sitcoms for me. Go on. One is I've got an imaginary navy called Merchant's Navy. It's yeah. just, it's I've yeah. got a navy in it. And the premise is I've got a navy. Yeah. And another one is I live in... And that's as far as he's got as well. Yeah, that's just... all I've come up with. If you've got any ideas there, uh, Carl, yeah. that'd be much appreciated. Yeah. Another one is I live in quite a salubrious part of North London, and that's called Merchant of Little Venice. And I live in Little Venice. Uh, I don't, again, I don't know what happens. I don't know what happens, but, uh, yeah. any ideas, Carl? You know, I've got one where I play an Italian waiter, and it's called Shut Up a Gervais. Yep. That's so, uh, we're, that's the one we're working on there, actually, to follow up with The Office. Do you like that? Yeah. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. We'll do something with that. Yeah. But <laughs> at the moment, we've got Rockbusters. Okay. okay. So, uh, these are mine. Um, number one, you've been dunking that for too long. That's LB. You've right? been dunking that so, too long. Oh, God, that's too easy. That's yeah, but too I easy. I always tease them, don't I? I give them something to make them feel like they're going to win something, and then I, I hit them hard with a tricky one. But it doesn't make sense. Yeah, go on. So, the first one, so that's the cryptic clue for a band or an artist. Their initials are LB, and yeah. the cryptic clue, you've been dunking that for too long. Yeah. So that's the first one. Second one, uh, you won't be able to play that game in this pub, because the table ain't big enough. <laughs> right? <laughs> Could be an old artist, could be a new one, could be a band. What's the initials? Uh, F D. All right, F D. You won't be able to play that game in this pub. The table ain't big enough. And the final one. Uh, well, I've had a rubbish day, so I'm happy it's over. All right, yeah. that's that's the third cryptic clue. The initials being G K. All right. Yeah. Well, I've had a rubbish day, so I'm happy it's over. They're the three clues. All you gotta do is email in Ricky <laughs> That's great. That's genius. Which one? The last one. All right. That yeah, is no genius. Saying, no That's the anything. best one you've ever done. All right. Uh, Ricky <laughs> <laughs> That's great. And then the middle one. At UK. Okay. Email in them three answers. You win the stuff. We have still got educating Ricky. <laughs> Uh, go on, let's we'll have one, let's have one. No, I'll give, I'll give you the titles. Give me the titles, yeah, go on, yeah. Right, you've got, um, three bits of info that's gone on in the world, yeah. or... Uh, Possibly. Sort of 
sort of uh, information. Times. Never times. go further back in the 17th century, do we? Well, uh, no, let's, 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 let's make it clearer. There's three bits of information <laughs> that people have put on the net, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whether or not they're true. Well, <laughs> yeah. Definition. And that he still gets it a little bit wrong oh, in translation well, yeah. and sort of adds bits to it. <laughs> yeah, go right, on. So we've got, uh, okay. I love it when he plays out those historical dialogues. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's yeah. like the 15th century where he goes, so anyway, a bloke says to himself, <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what I'll do. <laughs> so the horse isn't happy. Yeah, yeah go on. Right, so the three that you've, uh, you've got a pick from, you've got, uh, get your kit on, we're off down the butchers. <laughs> 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 yeah, oh. let's get your kit on, we're off down the butchers, yeah? Uh, we've well, got, um, wash up with you. <laughs> <laughs> wash up with wash you. Wash up with you. Ah, yeah. And, yeah. uh, the last one I couldn't really think of a, a good title for, so yeah. it's just, uh, <laughs> why don't they just get a diary or some paper or something? <laughs> We've got to make this into a book. This has got to be a book made for Christmas. Oh, God. Chapter headings. <laughs> yeah. don't, don't see your uh, email coming up with the Rockbusters answers, so... Well, let's <laughs> uh, let's give them out. Uh, the first <laughs> one was, um, you've been dunking that for too long. That yeah. was LB. Uh, Limp Biscuit. Limp Biscuit. Yeah, got that one. Uh, the third one, we'll jump to that one, because you've got it. Uh, well, I've had a rubbish day, so I'm happy it's all over. That was GK. That's a great one. That's Glad, glad it's night. Glad it's night. Glad it's night. That's glad that it's is night. brilliant, Carl. And the one that, uh, you're both having a problem with, uh, you won't be able to play that game in this pub. The table ain't big enough. FD. Go on. Fats Domino. Oasis. Live forever on XFM 104.9. Right. We're in the swing of things. It's my, it's mine and Steve's favourite bit of the whole show. This is what we do this show for now. Educating Ricky. Yeah. Go for it, Carl. As you said, learning can't be fun. Yeah. Yeah? Okay, I'll go for the one, what's the one about the butcher going down the butcher shop? You've got, uh, get your kit on, we're off down the butchers. Yeah. You going for that one? Yeah. Well, do you know the saying, oh, um, <laughs> don't let the cat out of the bag? Yeah. Do you know, do you know what it means? Yeah, well, don't give away a secret. Right. Well, do you know how it came about? No. Well, uh, ages ago, <laughs> before, like, <laughs> Ages ago. Course, 17th century? Yeah, before, like... Yeah, yeah, 17's good. Yeah. Before, like, you know, proper butchers and Jewhursts and supermarkets and that, you used to get these blokes who, oh, right. who sold meat, right? right? Butcher, butchers, they were called then, I think. Yeah, yeah, but the difference was they didn't stay in the same place, they moved about, right? So they'd turn up on a street corner right. and you'd have, like, loads of carrier bags of, like... Carrier uh, bags? <laughs> yeah, with, you know, with meat in and that, and people would Plastic be like, carrier bags. Yeah, yeah with whatever. mobile butcher on them. Yeah, yeah. Right, so, uh, <laughs> had an email address. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. People went, right, yeah, I need some meat, right, so they'd, uh, <laughs> they'd go up to this bloke and, uh, say, what have you got? And he'd say, well, I've got a, got a, you know, you can have a, a bag full of pig, or you can have, uh, whatever, a bag full of chicken, whatever. Yeah. And they'd go, yeah, how much? they go, oh, you know, call it, call it a fiver, whatever. Yeah. And, um, they'd, they'd buy them, and to, to make more money, they didn't always fill the bag with what they said was in it. Oh, and yeah, I thought that might be the case. Right? Yeah. So what did they, they do? Did they ever put Yeah. But I don't see why, what... <sighs> Okay, so sometimes they would put a cat in the bag they put and pretend it was bag. chicken or whatever else. Yeah, so... But why was a cat any cheaper than a chicken? Because cats are wandering around the streets, aren't they? Chickens aren't. So they so to get a chicken, they put a chicken on the top so that when they look in it, they'd go, yeah, that's all right. Got a bag full of chicken. They'd get home to make the dinner yeah. and they'd be like, what are we having tonight? And they'd go, well, you'll never guess. <laughs> and they'd, they'd have like, you know, well, you can have a chicken leg and... You know, but it wouldn't got, be, it would be cat. Yeah. Yeah, they'd have to defrost a pizza. Yeah. Sure. Did they mind that they were eating cat then, in, the, in those days? He didn't say. He just was saying about the saying, uh, don't let the cat out of the bag. It's like, you know, uh, if they see that, they're gonna go mad. I, I'm, I'm, I'm mildly disappointed with this story. It's all right if it's true, but yeah, it's something about it's just... I want to know more. He always leaves yeah. it. Is it Carl doesn't quench your thirst for knowledge? He creates more. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Well, yeah, he's like the pot noodle of information. Yeah, do you know, I, I, he never. I want to go. I'm not nourished by it. It's like if, it's, if for every fact he tells me, there's ten others that spring yeah. up that yeah. I have to get clear. 
Well, so it was the people that were doing this. It was the it was the dodgy butchers that coined this phrase. Were they saying to each other, "Don't let the cat out of the bag"? I. <laughs> what I mean by that, Jack, is don't let them see the cat. Yeah. What yeah. we've stuffed in there. Yeah. Dodgy butcher. That's another phrase, isn't it? <laughs> so that's that's the first one. Uh, is that a euphemism or is that yeah, dodgy butcher? As is meat delivered round the back. Sure. So that's that's that one. So let's get your kit on. What was that? Then. It's a, a euphemism for uh, homosexuality. Okay. And meat, presumably, in that means different things. It doesn't. It, it's it's a word that is also a male would it, bird. Would it mean chicken or cat <laughs> necessarily in that context? <laughs> or well, I suppose it could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So remember that time when you called me? I said I don't know where I am, and yeah. I couldn't concentrate. <laughs> Oh my god, what are you doing? I don't know where I am. What do you mean you didn't know where you were? What, you... I got lost. I, I what, went in London? Wandering. You got yeah, lost? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went wandering and then, uh, you know... It's when like... he first moved into his new place. He was yeah. walking back from his old place to his new place and he didn't know where he was. He How tried can to you ever really off. get lost in London, though? I'm just... It's um, a cabbie. Well, yeah, yeah, I don't want to do that because you feel bad pulling one over and then saying, where am I? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't appreciate that, do they? <laughs> but um, I found my way back, didn't I? Yeah. But you told me one minutes. time that you uh, that you you much prefer getting lost. You love wandering around and getting lost. Yeah, you said that's much better. Yeah, it the was a cold sand. day. It was a cold day. I just wanted to be at home. I had things to do. There's mm. a time and place to be lost. Go on, uh, go on. Oh uh, well, a place What's you don't place? know. What's the place to be lost? Somewhere you don't know. Right. Good. Okay. And specific. the time? The time, time when when you're not in a rush. Oh, shit, bad that is only gone and written it down. <laughs> The jingle there to announce a yet another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. Um, my mum called me to ask me to look in some of the magazine shops in London for a magazine that she can't find. It's called UFO Data. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I ain't heard of it. She said she's seen an advert for it in one of her ghost magazines. I love the fact that she can't even find the magazine about unidentified flying objects. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we get uh, we get clue she there. Thinks, I think I saw something, but I don't know whether it was a magazine or not. <laughs> so we get uh, we get a clue there as to why you you uh, give any credence to this crap. Yeah, well, it's oh, you know, I mean, Mama Pilkington's into the same shit. A lot of space out there, isn't there? Mm. She said that this magazine has got new story about how Aldrin brackets astronaut has got some evidence that aliens exist. Yeah. I told her that I found out today that the days are about 36 minutes longer on Mars. We chatted about how this is how they are more advanced than us. Do you mean the Martians? Yeah, if they've, if they've got a longer day, that's more time that they're awake working on stuff. Right, yeah, we know that makes no difference at all. No, it does. Think about it. Think yeah. about it. Look, think about it. Six o'clock here. Yeah. People are going, see you tomorrow. I'm going home. They'll be going, oh, another half hour. They've got a longer day. Productive. <laughs> and that's why they're able to fly. That's why they're whizzing around. <laughs> yeah, oh, over the years. Christ almighty, what drivel! Suzanne got in from work at 11.30. I told her about the UFOs in Mars. <laughs> she said she's too tired to chat. I said, does it mean aliens will be more tired than us or do they get more sleep? I got no answer. <laughs> I love it when it Suzanne does it. She never indulges no, you. No, it but scares she... her. Anything with ghosts and UFOs, she sort of... It doesn't scare it. her, it, it bores her. her. No, it freaks her out. <laughs> <laughs> scares her. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Read about a pub that is getting some stick because they've stopped a horse going in. It's been the horses regular for ages. <laughs> there's been some new owners who've taken over the pub and they said they're serving fresh fruit and don't want a horse in there anymore. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I met Suzanne after she finished work and we went for a brew in another cafe. God, Jesus. It's always having a brew in a cafe. It's like a sitcom. <laughs> it is. Suzanne said I looked tired and fed up. She taught me some way to breathe that will relax me. I wasn't feeling that relaxed though because the person behind the counter was banging about making a coffee. Noise stresses me out. I wonder if less deaf people die of stress than people with working ears do. <laughs> oh, it's the theories. It's the it theories. It is such a noisy world though, isn't it? It is. London is noisy. Very noisy. I think just everywhere. Just noise in general. I mean, I haven't got pictures in, in our flat because of that mirrored wall I've got. Yeah. Right? Uh, 
So, I mean, it's tiny, you've been in it. Got windows on one wall, door to get in on the other, kitchen on the other, mirrored wall on the other. <laughs> so, there's no nowhere there. There's no, no space for art. I'm intrigued how you sit at home. Uh, what's the, where's the, where's the sofa? At home? Yeah. Facing the mirror. So you sit yeah. looking at yourself all night? Yeah. As opposed to a, a painting? Yeah, but at least that changes each day. No, it doesn't. It does. The no, no, changes. it's not. It's round and miserable. Every fucking day. No, no, honestly. It's, it's good to, because you don't look at yourself otherwise, especially me. I haven't got any hair to comb or anything. So I don't look in the mirror as much as the normal person. So, whereas now, I'm looking there every day. So you're sat at you're home staring at yourself? No, because the telly's in front of the mirror. But are you not so distracted by yourself? Yeah, you do. You? When the adverts are on, you look up. And if Suzanne's sat next to me, I tend to talk to her through the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you mean? So, why don't you look at her when you talk to her? Well, you, know, you don't have to turn your neck or anything. There's no neck usage going on. I can just look forward, I look at the telly, lift the eyes up, look in the mirror, look at me, look at her. <laughs> what does she do? Actually, we're, we're used to it. That's, that, there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's like there's more people in the room in a way. <laughs> like, and they're further away! There's nothing odd about that. Why wouldn't you use... It doesn't matter. Your Sorry, eyes, remember why your eyes wouldn't still... you talk to your girlfriend via a mirror all the time? Is that your question? Well, no, I think it's quite normal. If your head is facing a mirror where you can see everything in that room, you know, it's a small flat, I can see everything that's going on in there without moving my head. <laughs> Stephen Hawking would be well happy. <laughs> So I can look forward, she's sat next to me. <laughs> if if I'm watching the telly, I can say something. Now she's getting the sound from me still, because she's sat close. Yeah. But yeah, we're further away, but things look better from a distance anyway. <laughs> so, so that's how you managed to you keep are, this relationship alive, you are yeah? maybe. Just, you're such an odd little man. But yeah. no, it's, it's not odd. You see, there was a woman on, on the estate who, who did use... Have I told you about Miss Peggy before? No. It rings a bell. Go on. I'm gonna tell you ages ago, it's this fat woman who used to be on the estate. She had a three-wheeler bike. <laughs> and what, her husband's... Push bike? Pedal bike? Yeah, like a tricycle thing. Yeah. But a big one. Right. She used to sit her husband in the basket in the back. <laughs> cycle about. Yeah. You. She was known as Miss Piggy. Anyway. Oh, is this the one that she used to beat him up so your dad pretended to be a policeman? Yeah, yeah that's it. Anyway, well, the way she used to communicate, she used to always go in quicksave and nick biscuits. And if anyone went up to her to say, stop making the biscuits, she'd pull out like a little mirror out of a bag and she'd look in it, but talk to you via the mirror. <laughs> oh God! Oh man! What, what, what? This so she's insane? She's up, it's weird, isn't it? It's it was like, really weird. Like, it used to scare me. It's like, it's like a Salvador Dali painting. <laughs> you, you exist in there. Yeah. <laughs> It's really, really So weird. hang on, so she used to talk to people through the mirror, because she was mental. I can sit, watch the telly, and look at me watching the telly in the mirror all night. No. That's <laughs> no, weird. That would be really weird. It's really weird, Carl. Oh. I'd be very conscious of myself. No, yeah, I think it gives, you, it gives you confidence in that, and if you are sort you of- confidence? Well, yeah, because you're seeing yourself more, and you pick up what habits you do, and stuff like that. So what have you changed through your- the uh, of yourself. I, I, I sort of grew grew a beard the other week, just something different to look at for a bit. And then you get sick of that, it's like a piece of art. Change that, have a bit of a shave. Can you see the back of the telly in the mirror? A little bit, yeah. If the flat's a mess, it's a mess twice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Oh. What do you think of people who are so angry at art, they, uh, they try and censor it or they try and destroy it? Uh, Do you think art should ever be censored? It's where you put it. If it's in a gallery, then it doesn't have to be censored. If it's in Trafalgar Square, where everyone's wandering around having a nice time, you don't want a 12-foot cock. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all about where you put it. I think some art looks better because of where it is. If you want to do a serious point, don't use animals. No? Well, I disagree with that because um, I think um, my favourite is probably Charles Dickens and I think the greatest story ever told is A Christmas Carol and there's only one way that could ever be improved and that is a Muppet yeah, Christmas that's Carol. That's absolutely right, yeah. So, uh, and I think that you could, and I think people could take a lesson from that and maybe do other films with the Muppets. A Muppet Schindler's List. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you could make it so moving, couldn't you? Schindler's List in space! <laughs> Miss Piggy's choice. Well, have we talked about that? What? 
about things like that in in art as well. Do you think that that some, bringing something so serious uh, to the masses, like, like 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 films do, things like the Holocaust and uh, like Sophie's Choice, where she has to choose which child um, lives and dies. Why does she have to pick? Well, because the Nazis were horrible, nasty, evil people. And which one did she pick? I, th I don't. I don't think that's the point. I don't think that's the point. This I love not, the idea that this is not a betting game. No, but I imagine this is, this is like deal, no deal. It's kind of you down to the last, <laughs> down to the last two. <laughs> which one are you going to go for? Uh, oh God! <laughs> but why did you ask which one did she choose? Because <laughs> even if he said the names Robert and Alison, what difference would it make? You don't know the story. Why is well, it? Because that you've then said I'd ask more. I'd ask more then. If, if he said Alison, I'd go. Well, what was it with Alison? That what did she have over Robert? That's what films are meant to do. You question it. Whenever I watch a film with Suzanne, I always say at the end, "What was going on there?" Oh, That's because Jesus you're an idiot. Christ. That's because you've just watched them up at Christmas Carol and you can't understand why a frog's able to talk. <laughs> I'm all for films with a, with a good storyline. Yeah, brilliant. That's a perfect <laughs> point. <laughs> One extraordinary on, point. Go, there's gonna, this is gonna be, he's gonna follow this up, mate. He's gonna follow this up. He's got something up. here, he's got Come something on. here. Carl, well, go on then, what's your no, take on films? Films, films are really good. You can, you can get lost in them. Right. And, uh... You like one with a good story? I like, I mean, whenever anyone asks, it's always the same. It's Elephant Man. Mm. It's Kez. Mm -hmm. Mission Impossible 2. <laughs> Mission, <laughs> Mission Impossible, Impossible 2. <laughs> These are your, these are the, what you consider the great works no, I'm of film I'm just saying art. these are ones that I've enjoyed, enjoyed recently. There's so many films that I haven't seen, yet you always say, oh, have you seen so-and-so? Well, Mission it. Impossible 1. <laughs> <laughs> and there's good news for you. Three's out. <laughs> That's true. Uh, this is Strokes and, uh, last night. Um, we just had a call, um, didn't we? From, uh, um, Johnny Mango. Oh, yeah, Johnny Mango, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, old, 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 the mangster. Um, and he informed me that one of the worst was his dead, and I didn't know that. Yeah, Edge Cutler, who was the lead man, I think. Yeah. It was, he said he died the most rock and roll death you can die. He said he was uh, apparently driving on a, on a terrible cocktail of cider and other things, presumably. Yeah. Apples and jams. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> he crashed into a tractor. Now, I wonder, is that true? I, no. I, 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 JM's not winding me up. Yeah, I, hope the, I hope the Mango Boy's not... Having a laugh at me. Is that true? One of the Wurzels died by tractor. <laughs> Did he- is, is that true? So, give us a call. What's is the number again, Carl? Oh, eight, seven hundred, eight hundred, one, two, three, four. If so, I'm- I'm sorry that I disrespected them. I didn't- I didn't know. Could you imagine? Oh, God. If- Right. Say if, like, you're the driver of the tractor. Mm. Mm. And you- you kill someone, you go, oh, God, I've killed someone. Mm. And then you look and it's someone famous. <laughs> yeah, or Ash Cutler. <laughs> Yeah, go on, what was your point? No, it's just like, not Terrible, only, yeah. it's like you've killed someone and you look. But I mean, all, yeah, I know what you mean, actually. What, that makes is, even that worse. And what, what makes it even worse, they were rich. Yeah. Oh, no, that'd but be... say if it was someone who's like really big in the world. No, that is a good, I quite like that, it's an interesting point there. Oh, that's your bag, no wonder I can't find what I'm looking for. Oh, right, well, as Bono said, did you bring a bag? Yeah. Sorry, I'm there's just, a, is that under there, Rick? Sorry, sorry about this, I'm not, I'm not record, this is getting a bit slop, sloppy, you no, know? No, 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 it is, Rick, it's getting it? sloppy. It's never got sloppy before. No, I've got a list here, because we went to, um, this award ceremony in the week, um, uh, we were up for an award. Well, yeah. let me, I have to explain it to Carl, because, uh, basically we were up for an award, and it's called the, it's the Trick Awards. Now, Trick stands for, uh, Television and Radio Industries Club annual awards, right? We it's never heard of it either. We never heard of it. It's some kind of, like, television radio, uh, industry club. Right. That's what yeah, that's the clue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but uh, we don't want to, I'm not trying to slag off the award, because no. it was, you know, it was, it was a big thing and they really made an effort and it was really nice, food was brilliant, it was at the Grosvenor House Hotel, really nice do and, you know, lots of industry people in that there, it was really classy. We got there nice and early, so, you know, yeah. we were there for a good four yeah. hours. Before we had fun. to sit down. And, <laughs> but it was just kind of surreal, it was just a bit weird, because it was packed with the cream, I'm mean, literally the cream, big names, you know, uh, Martin Kemp, one of the first people I saw, you know, came in, like, big TV radio industry names, on-screen talent, behind the scenes. People. John Barnes. Barnes was there. Um, Beadle was there. Sir Cliff Richard was there. Yeah. Right. Anyway, so they, 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 the voice comes on and says, Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the chairman of the president, the president of the, the uh, Trick Awards. And we had to get, stand up, all of these people had to stand up and give a standing ovation as he walked to his table to Tom O'Connor, former presenter of Crosswits. 
You are joking. No. He's the president. And he came out, he told a few gags, sort of like, it was like, straight away, it was, you know, old school stuff. You want know, like, to thank the ladies, because, uh, you know, it was nothing without the ladies, all the lovely ladies here. And we're waiting for a joke. No. <laughs> just thanking the ladies. Well, you're forgetting that just prior to that, he, uh, he said grace. Oh, he said grace. Before we ate. Right. It's me, it was me, Steve, and Ash, you know, our producer, the little, um, disabled fella. Right, and he's, he's there in his wheelchair, and there's me and Steve. we you know, we're, we're, we're standing up during grace. Oh, can I just stop you there? Go on. Saw someone in the week, and, um... <laughs> Sorry, did we bore you? <laughs> <laughs> you just reminded me then about the Go little on. producer who yeah. was in a wheelchair. Yeah. Last week you said, blah, 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 and our producer who's in a wheelchair got a text from someone saying, what's happened to you? They thought you were talking about me. Oh, really? Oh. So, yeah. Oh. You're, you're handicapped in a different way. <laughs> so, go on. <laughs> and, uh... Tom O'Connor, he said, uh, uh, thank you, God, for- We thought this was a joke initially. We thought it was gonna be, like, a kind of cheeky gag. That's, why we, that's why we were laughing at <laughs> that. That's why we were laughing raucously. <laughs> <laughs> but we went anyway. And then he went, I oh, thank you, God, for this, uh, and, uh, and help those who walk alone. And Ash went, what about those that don't walk at all? <laughs> he said, I've never been, I've never been left out of grace before. <laughs> so, but we had to, and we had to have kind of, like, bowed our heads slightly, you know, and, uh, did we say our man? I know that we were sort of, lots of people did. I'm pretty sure Cliff, I did. I think, probably chimed in there. Yeah. And he so, sang it. Yeah, exactly. So, um. Like Mariah Carey. So anyway, so, but before, again, you see, what he's forgotten is before Tom took to the stage, this guy walks up there, I don't know who he is, says, there's a lot of people here this, this afternoon, you know, it's a wonderful uh, event, but of course there's a load of celebrities as well. He says, thank you for all the celebrities that have turned up. And then he went... Table 77. Mr. Russ Abbott. And we all have applause. We, can we have the spotlight there? Russ Abbott, by the way, smoking a pipe. Um, actually, really, he looked like, uh, a bit like, um, uh, Barrett Holmes. <laughs> this hilarious Sherlock Holmes character. Then he went, Table 107. The cast of Bad Girls. Clap. We'll have to clap. And then he went, <laughs> table five, Alice Beer. Clap. Slightly smaller clapping. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, and I thought, well, when is this gonna- uh, He went through every single celebrity in the room. And there were about, you know, a hundred. Table 53, John Inman, everyone. It's John Inman, round of applause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, uh, table 70, Mr. Simon Cowell. Boo. Yeah, there was, there was booing yeah. there. And yeah. they all booed him. That was nice. Yeah, that was a joke. Ironic booing, I think. Could they cheer for Foxy? Was he on the table? <laughs> I mean, I Foxy. Foxy wasn't there. He was doing his show. When they went up, they won an award. Cowell and, uh, Waterman and Chapman. Table uh, 43. Peter Sissons, everyone. Peter Sissons. <laughs> went through every single name. Ricky got so paranoid they might mention him that we, we kind of legged it upstairs and were watching from the balconies. They shone the spotlight on our table. <laughs> and and it was yes. like empty. <laughs> that was particularly fun. <laughs> But, uh, then at the end, Sir Cliff got up there, right, because Sir Cliff was giving out the, um, the Lifetime Achievement Award, right, he gets up, he used to speak to you, because oh, this is a personal friend of mine, a seven days a week friend, Lifetime Achievement Award goes to Mrs. Gloria Hannaford, right, we immediately start thinking what exactly were her Lifetime Achievements. I think living that long. <laughs> That's pretty much it. I don't know what it is she's done, I Gloria tell Hunter. You what she does. I don't exactly, you know, I know she's done a Radio 2 show, I don't think that's We're not anymore. dissing her, we're not dissing yeah, anyone. We're not taking the mick out of anyone, but, you but, know. Uh, but anyway, it was she... just a strange, it was just a strange event. But Gloria got taken unawares by this and started to ad lib a speech, right? And I swear to God, about 12 minutes in, she was telling us how, and I can repeat, I can tell you now if you're interested, her lovely daughter Karen is currently in Australia, is partly work, is partly a holiday, Carl, and she's having a whale of a time, but she's not spoken to her for ages. And then she went, she went, Actually, she's been there for a long time. Yeah, it's, and it's like I was thought she was going. She doesn't call. You yeah. do that, you get a blue Peter, and this is how you. <laughs> we thought she was going to get walls. photos out, maybe start showing it. it no, was it, was very, it was a nice bizarre. event, and uh, you know everyone there. Henry Cooper was there. So Henry Cooper. <laughs> it was so good because every was... single element as well was sponsored by someone. Yeah. And I was looking at the menu. I've got the program here, and the menu, right? The pudding is sponsored by Electrolux. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if you've ever had a pudding sponsored by yeah. Electrolux. I was sponsored by Zanussi. When, no. when everyone was doing the prayers, did you, did you look at them with their eyes shut, <laughs> like, like you did at school? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, what, when you had Did to you look at someone with your eyes shut? No, like, you'd do that, you'd do your, um, your hands together. Yeah. Yep. And you sort of look at people with their eyes shut and think that's like what they look like when they're sleeping. <laughs> Play record. <laughs> Didn't you ever do that? <laughs> Table 60. Lisa Tarbuck. <laughs> that's that uh, corner shop, lessons learned from Rocky 1 to Rocky. I love that guitar. That's mm. great, it's real glam rock, that's T-Rex and Bowie. I was not, I played some of it from, uh, Siggy Stardust today, but instead I brought in a different album, I want to play a bit of Bowie. Is that mm. alright? Oh, of course, yeah, always, yeah, always. Bit of Beatles. Mm. Still to come up, by the way. Um, we, uh, uh, with the education of Carl, last week he did, um, uh, Che Guevara. He did very, very well. well. Yeah. 
before that, the week before that, you learned all about Rasputin, didn't you? Mm. And this week you've been studying Hitler, haven't you? Mm -hmm. How does that go? Do you, how do you reckon that? It's a bit tough. Okay. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll give you the full story later, Steve. Do you know much about him? No. It's, um, mm -hmm. they're all linked. All these stories I've been reading, they've all got a similar sort of thing going through them. They're right. born, they have a bit of a tough upbringing. Mm -hmm. Um, things aren't going well, and they seem to take it out on, on other people. Okay. But I'll tell you more later. Okay. Yeah, I don't think you can, I mean, I don't think Hitler and Che Guevara. It's the same sort of thing. thing. Che Guevara, when he was a kid, yeah. had like asthma, yeah. right? He wasn't an happy kid. Uh, Hitler, um, he, uh... Um, he only had one ball. Well, I was, I was trying right. to find about that. Yeah, seriously, he phoned me up in the week, I said, how's it going? He went, I've skimmed it, I've just skimmed it, I was looking for the, uh, the testicle thing. Now, I don't know if they left that out, or it's not true. Right. So <laughs> he was, he was trying to look up that Hitler has only got one ball. I think they only did it to wind him up. <laughs> because it's like, you know, yeah, you might be taking over the world, Mm. But we're all saying you've only got one testicle. Sure. And it's so did you look? Did you look in the index and it's sort of Hitler, Adolf, <laughs> family life, early childhood, testicles, <laughs> testicles absence of. Just sort of skim through because one it, of it, yeah. it, mother mother brackets <laughs> other <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Well, Albert Hall <laughs> yeah. The only thing I could find was at one point in in like when he was trying to run the place, uh, <laughs> there was a meeting going on. And somebody put a bag in a, in the meeting room and it blew up. Yeah, yeah. and the table well, it was under the him. table. Yeah, but. What, you wondering if the blew a testicle? It was, it was, <laughs> the, well, the testicle was under the table. No, the like, bag, the bag blew off the ball. No, the ball thing. sack was probably hanging below the, uh, protective top, and so that's where he could have lost. But why would he have only just lost the one? Uh, because the- The way he was sitting. <laughs> Cross-legged or something. <laughs> sure. Okay. Well, I mean, again, again, if, I mean, last week we had a Che Guevara expert phone up. Maybe they could, uh, maybe there's a Hitler expert this time who could, uh, maybe find out and confirm the, uh, the testicle, uh, yeah. theory. Yeah. What's the number again, Carl? Oh, wait, 700, 800, 1, 2, 3, 4. You need to have at least I, I, a PhD I, I, or something. I don't think we should invite calls about Hitler. I think we're asking for trouble. No, I'm talking no. about someone who's done a study of him and he's done a PhD. Oh, okay. I'm not talking oh, about right. any old nut. I mean, that's, that's what I've got because I'm not a fan of tattoos. I don't. But where did you read this again? This was. Internet? Uh, this was on the internet, yeah, it was, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. And I, I just don't understand why people do it. That's, that's what got me attention. Because me, um. Sorry, what have, what have I learned from this? Um, that if you, if you wanted to get one, you know, you can get one done by a machine now. <laughs> you know, people say machines are sort of taking over and that, and, and there's another one. But it's just the fact, I mean, I don't know. I, so I know, give us the snappy title of this, this education why again. Why don't they just get a diary or some paper or something to write it on? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I always think when I see people with, with loads of tattoos, like there's that fellow who we were talking about the other week in Scotland, who oh. was covered 99% in tattoos. Yeah. It's just like, what have you done that for? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You can't get rid of it now. You've, you've, you've done it now. Yeah. Um, my, one of my uncles, right, Tattoo Stan, he, he, um, he's just caked in them. Tattoo Right. I don't think he's my proper uncle, but it's just like, <laughs> me, me dad's got Tattoo okay. Stan! No, he does got a, That's the province in Russia, isn't it? He does got loads of mates who, When like, you say he's not your proper uncle. I do you know how, like, when someone's coming around with the school? Right, Uncle Stan. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And there was, like, there was, um, my dad had loads of mates like that. There was John the Screw. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, he either works in a prison or he likes to have sex. Cabby. <laughs> Cab driver. <laughs> okay. There was Jimmy the Hat. I don't know what he Jimmy did. the Hat? Yeah. Oh, and, did uh, he wear a hat? No. No. There was, um, <laughs> there was Fred the Veg. Your story wasn't a relative. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Fred the Veg used to get us, like, big bags of potatoes and that. Fred the Veg, okay. And there was, there was Tattoo Stan. Right. And he was just caked in them, and I used to always look at him thinking, why have you done that? I must have only been, like, you know, I suppose if, if you're born with a name like Tattoo Stan, <laughs> exactly. you're destined, Sorry, aren't you, really? Were they, like, a 1950s gang? I'm well, worried just, about, like, I'm worried doing, about doing a bank job. What was his name, The Hat? What was his Jimmy, name? Jimmy the Hat. I'm worried mm. about Jimmy the Hat. Yeah. Not having a hat. <laughs> I don't understand it. Are you sure he didn't have a hat? Not when I met him. Did he ever wear a hat? <laughs> I didn't see him that much. Do you think it was a joke, like, you know, when, um, y your mate's sort of like, you know, uh, eight foot and huge, you call him <laughs> Little <laughs> John or Tiny? Mm. Do you think- Well, the fact that he never wore Yeah, they went, hold on, I've, I've noticed some hat about Jim. Go on. No hat. And I go, oh, true, let's call him Jim the Hat. <laughs> Jim the Hat, yeah. 
bum. He, um, my uncle Stan, he had like loads of them. He did, did them himself. Oh dear. And it was always <laughs> that thing. <laughs> what was it, what was it things like? It was, he had like the, the cross. Cut here. Cut one here, on made the, on in Britain. And if you're going to do them yourself, I'd say at least make sure you're, good, you're sort of a good drawer. Yeah. And don't and do it, it in the mirror so it comes out backwards. Well, that, that was the other thing. But like, I remember he did, um, I mean, names are all right. He had like all his kids' names down his arm. <laughs> and, uh, what are they called? Yeah. Oh, God, it is. <laughs> that is Dan Jr. Yeah. And, um... Paul shits the bed. <laughs> um, I'm trying to... <laughs> oh, Wabai Kate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> Frankie never amounts to anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! So he had like uh, <laughs> <laughs> Johnny. I don't think he's mine. <laughs> so he did uh, all this stuff. I don't even know why I'm telling you about that. No, nor do I, Carl. Hey, so, I to be honest, I don't know that if I don't know. If, maybe you just have to picture this. For my picture, my sister <laughs> took, had to take a photo once. She was working in like a factory. Not to denigrate people who work in factories, but there happened to be a particularly oddball kind of lank-haired weird guy living uh, working in this factory, and he made his own. He did his own tattoos. And she took a photo of it because she was so extraordinary. He'd drawn it himself. Now, bear in mind, it was the kind of thing you saw when you were doing art when you were like <laughs> 15. <laughs> this is the sort of person who designed their own, like, rock, heavy rock album cover. <laughs> yeah. He's that sort of person. So, I mean, like, was it, was it a dragon draw? with breasts? You're not far off, Rick. No. You're not far off. I'll tell you what it was. He had this tattooed on his back. It took up his entire back. She took a photo of it for me. He drew it himself. He had it tattooed himself. And it was just too much detail. Too yeah. much detail for a tattoo. It needs to be fairly simple, I think, to make it kind of yeah. <laughs> it was <laughs> it was a, n a naked female vampire having a shower. <laughs> why was she having a shower? Having a shower. Well, that's why she was naked. Yeah. And so she had. She she'd been out. She'd, uh, she was uh, presumably. Uh, she'd been, uh, been, been out. Been out. A lot of blood. Wanted yeah, well, she, 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 uh, she was naked, so she, you could see her, 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 her naked body. Yeah. Uh, she's quite a beautiful vampire, yeah. relatively speaking. Yeah. Um, although the symmetry of her face was somewhat off. Yeah. The only thing I think that gave well, her yeah, away- bad spine. Was that she had, um, she did have some pointed teeth. I right. mean, I think that was how you knew she was a vampire. Right. Was she looking- but, um, was she, looking... she was having a shower was- Yeah, that, that is weird, isn't it? <laughs> well, it well, but he sort of drawn he, in he, all, he, he all, he all the- He said to the- he said to the I said, listen, I, I want a, a naked bird, right? But I don't want to be- Gratuitous. He goes, well, you could put her in a shower, because then they went, pop well, her in the shower. Least, that at least gives some kind yeah, of that's the plot. That's the plot. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's justified <laughs> within the story if she's <laughs> in a shower. Sure, sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have that. So, Carl. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, any other nicknames your friends of your family had? What was your nickname, Carl? Just, uh, Pilkey. Because <laughs> for a minute I thought Carl the Veg would have made a lot of sense. Yeah, Carl the Veg. And what, what, why has your dad got a little tattoo, dopey twat, on his arm? <laughs> right, we'll do the answers to, uh, Robusters next, yeah? Brilliant. <laughs> Buzz Cox. Still sounds brilliant, that. It is a cracker. They're from Manchester as well, Carl. So you get a little bit of pride there, eh? I think one of them's, uh, one of my mate's dad's. Really? Yeah, I think so. What's his nickname? Well, his name was, uh, I don't really want to say his name. Oh, yeah. okay. Laurie, his first name was. Yeah. Still, uh, still is, probably. Yeah. Uh, was and, well, you know those little fellas at school that didn't know each other, weren't related and weren't friends because it would be too obvious, that they had webbed, um, hands and big heads? Yeah. What, what were they, did they have any nicknames? Again, too obvious, isn't it? Yeah. Go on. Well, oh, big head, or, you know, sure. Oh, I bet you got that juggling or oh, frog twins. Yeah. Can I just interrupt you guys because we've just had an email here. Um, I hate to query you, Carl, and you're educating Ricky sections. I know you put a lot. Of, don't read this. Let me just read it for you. Um, just had an email here from Olivia, and this has also been corroborated by someone else. I, I forget who, who it was. She was just she just tuned in and she just heard you explaining the expression "letting the cat out of the bag." So sure. uh, it's all to do with cats that were put in bags yeah. by, by dodgy butchers, <laughs> possibly in the 17th century. We're not too sure. <laughs> um, anyway, she claims. Well, uh, let me see. She, she says uh, she uses both the words twaddle and crap uh, in relation. In, in relation to your definition, <laughs> oh. uh, she says letting the cat out of the bag is an old shipping expression from when sailors used to get flogged for their misdemeanours. The cat letting the is cat, the cat of nine it tails, is. Of which uh, is. is a kind of whip thing that you, they used yeah. to keep hanging in a bag below deck. If yeah. it was discovered that a sailor had done something wrong, the cat would be let out of the bag yeah. and get a whipping. Of course, yeah. it is. don't let the cat out of the bag. We need to cover something she, up. Which she's is she's talking nonsense. No, right? she's not. That's she the is. truth. That's because the, the truth. one I read about that was there's not enough room in here to swing a cat, right? And that was people who worked on a boat. Yeah, well, that's the, the same way. Well, that's fine. They're the same way. They're the not going to keep going on about people working on a boat to get those. <laughs> 
<laughs> you can't about? have two phrases about the same thing. Can't they're not going to be going to do with their time. Think how many just coming up. Yeah. Think how many metaphors have birds in them, and you know uh, uh, it's ridiculous. Why can't you have? You can have as many sounds as you like about anything, Carl. Yeah, There's well, not a rule. Whatever. They don't go. We've made one up about yeah. the cat and nine tails. Well, cheers for that, Oliver. Um, <laughs> Olivia. Olivia. To Elliot. I, I just w I, can before we go. Can we just get an, an email off Anders because I think he must. Well, I think we've probably turned him round with this show. <laughs> I have thought so. I think he's going to be say saying, coming to us with his tail between his legs, saying, <laughs> "Sorry, lads, yeah. a blinding show. I was wrong. You were right." <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, a song for the lovers is very exciting this yeah, week. Yeah, uh, we haven't had a song for the uh, the lovers or the ladies for quite some time. Let's yeah, combine so, the two. So I mean, and sorry, John yeah. Martin, may you never. Let's end with Beautiful that. Beautiful. We'll see you next time. So, yeah. Bye. Um, well, I went for a what's her name, Steve. You don't know. I, I've I've had mm. uh, problems with my legs. Oh. <sighs> Christ almighty. He's the same, what are you, 33? He's a hypochondriac. And you talk like you're a seven-year-old he's, Honestly, man. the slightest thing, he's got time off work for this. We went to the dentist three Ow. times in one week. He goes, now his legs Ow. rubbed two times a week for no, some I reason. I don't. I don't. In and out of the kidney hospital, and they're going, there's no kidney stone, Mr. Poulton. He's going, oh, right. Christ mm. almighty, do some fucking work. No, the thing is, I've been, in the last, like, 30-odd years, I've been working hard, and I've let my body get run down a bit. How have you, like, you're 30, what are you? 30, 33. Right, uh, 33, sorry to start with such a hard question. <laughs> but how have you been working for 30 years? <laughs> well, I just have, I sort of, uh, I got on with it. At three? <laughs> at three? No, I'm Well, just you didn't saying. get on with anything at school, did you? Because you were just <laughs> kissing about. Yeah. You weren't working yeah. out there. What was the first job you got? How old were you? Uh, I was 15. Right, okay, so you've been working for 15 years then, okay, good, right. <laughs> yeah, but right. I had my paper round when I was 10, didn't I, and that was, that was hard graft. That's why I'm bald and that, getting up at half four. It all adds <laughs> up, doesn't it? All adds up. So anyway, uh, mm. I kicked me height when I was a kid. <laughs> He always says this, A, like it's a classic story that everyone should know, yeah, everyone and also right. the phrase, kicking my own height. Yeah, no, explain so. what you mean. Just kicked me out when I was when I was kick a kid. Your, no one understands. You kicked Carl. your leg up to I the height that you were at that time. Yeah, yeah. So I if you were, my height. It's not a well-known phrase. You can't just go and kick me out. So you were so you were four and a half foot, and you put your toe up into the air four and a half feet by kicking. Yeah, but I, I landed on my back. Right. Okay. <laughs> Imagine seeing that in the playground. They go <laughs> get Carl Pilkington to kick his eye. I bet he falls over like a fucking penguin. It wasn't penguin. in the playground. My dad got me to do it in the garden. Brilliant. <laughs> so why, why did he you sell tickets? The neighbours were cracking <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah. Why did you fall over? Did, did, you, did you hit I yourself in the I head? I didn't have kick the height. I mean, my leg got high up, but I was that chuffed that I got that high, I didn't think of putting my leg down again. <laughs> so what's it look like? What the fuck did that look like? He's got to think it all through. I thought it was automatic. <laughs> no, no, like, you, you, it stayed there. You, you sort of stay oh, balanced. Christ but you almighty. Didn't think, oh, I'm loving this. This is brilliant, but I, what should I do now? I, <laughs> I've got my leg up. I'll just keep yeah. up. Whoa! <laughs> like I hit the salute with his leg. What? what were you doing? So anyway, I landed on my back yeah. and uh, and I did some damage, I think. Yeah. And it's because Definitely. of that. You sure you didn't land on your head? And it's because of that, like, all like, all them years and what have you, yeah. I've had like a trapped nerve in my leg. Right. So I thought, right, now's the time to have it done, because when you get older, I mean, it was the kidney stone thing, once you've seen, once you've sort of looked at, you know, death and what have you, mm. uh, it just makes you think, got to start looking after your body. Do you think you could die of the, the uh, slightly bad leg that you've had for 15 years? <laughs> well, you just... Do you think that'll eventually kill you? <laughs> well, well, it could do if I can't run away from danger quick enough. Right. Again, you're thinking of <laughs> Jurassic Park coming true. Well, whatever then, I'm just saying, you yeah. look after yourself. You know, if you don't want to listen you to always hop. who's got a problem, get it sorted. I'll tell you what though, if you have to fight off danger and you kick them, <laughs> put the leg back down immediately <laughs> after. So anyway, so I went to see this fella, to uh, like a professional uh, leg rubber. A um, professional leg rubber, yeah. And he's, uh, he, he sort of said, uh, a few things that were quite interesting. Mm. Remember that time when we had a chat on the last lot of, like, podcasts. I said, am I in charge of my brain? Or is my brain in charge of me? Yes, remember what I said? That's the most stupid thing you've ever said. 
Yeah, well, we'll listen to this then. So oh. I go and see this leg rubber. Professional leg rubber, yeah. Right, and he is professional. Yeah. Right, Remember, so you... leg rubber, you haven't said doctor at any <laughs> yeah. point in this conversation. He's a leg rubber. So, so this, this, whatever, however profound this is, it came from a man who is self-confessed professionally leg rubbing. Not just leg. Does he, he does do left and right? Or? Back, back rubbing as well, he does it all. Right, right. right. So I'm in there, rubber. and I didn't mention about how I thought my brain was, you know, was in charge of me and stuff. Uh, I'm lying there, he's bending me about and what have you. Mm. The first problem we came across is that my nerves aren't long enough for right. my body. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> my nerves aren't long enough for your body. He yeah. was lifting my legs up and I was going, right, don't, oh, stop that a minute, that's certain that. He's like, what do you mean? He said, I've only got them like, like just about. Well, that's your tendons. No, no, but your nerves are in your legs as well and your tendons don't hurt, it's your nerves that kick in. It's your nerves that make you well, go Yeah, but hurt. they hurt because your tendons are being overstretched. Well, I'm just telling you what he said. Right, so, so he lifted the leg up and I went, right, Was this above a laundrette, this surgery? <laughs> no, it's a proper place. He had like towels and all that on Oh, the... okay. <laughs> oh, he's got towels. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. So, um... Definitely a laundrette. So, so I'm lying there. <laughs> Other people's towels. <laughs> he's got yeah, towels, underpants, bras. Halfway through, he's... Yeah, halfway through he's saying, you haven't got 20p, have you for the dryer? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm lying there and he lifts the leg up. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that hurts a lot. Mm. So he said, oh yeah, short nerves. And I said, what do you mean? He said, you, you know, you're, you're outside of the body. Is longer than your inside. Right, he doesn't sound like a doctor. He does not sound like the a doctor. The outside of your body is yeah. longer than the inside. Of <laughs> so he, he he had me lying on my front and what have you, and he was sort of crushing me back. Right. And he was going, does that hurt? I said, yeah. It was like 48 quid this as well. Mm -hmm. Put me through all this pain and what have you. Well, you got some good advice though. He said, you're pretty stressed. And I said, yeah. So it's, you know, I have quite a bit of stress in my life. And I explained to him about the kidney stones and that, so, you know, that, that's... That he went, oh, shut the fuck <laughs> up. He probably said that, he said that's where you were probably got a lot of tenseness. And a lot of tenseness. Mm. Is that the phrase he used as yeah, a trained no, professional it's a, rubber? He's a, a, a doctor, he's definitely a doctor. So anyway, yeah. he said, do you relax much? You, you know, haven't you... got any Lenore, have you? <laughs> I want these sheets to come out nice, nice and soft. He said, do you, uh, you know, you should learn to meditate or something. So because you, you know, you, you're all tensed up. Mm. We're living in a stressful world, as I told me about it. So when I was telling him that I have problems relaxing, mm. he said, oh, he said that you're obviously the sort of person who's yeah, gullible enough to spend 46 quid for this oh, hokum. He said, you're the sort of person whose brain is in charge of them rather than them being in charge of the So brain. all you did was you met a person as stupid as you? <laughs> yeah. No, but I thought it's interesting that he's, he, this is what he does for a living. Yeah. And he picked up, that was the first visit, that's the first, I'd only been there about 22 minutes. Yeah. You get half an hour for 48 quid. Right. But, uh, he, he picked up on that yeah. within like 15, No, he saw a right fucking sucker coming. <laughs> no, he did pick up on that, yeah. Okay. But anyway, don't, the reason- Don't go to him again. The reason, uh, well I am doing, I've got locked into it, I've got to go at least another three times. Why? And try to get out of it. I don't know, I didn't realise that you have to have a minimum amount of things. So what I'm saying I can't is, wait, well, what's the wisdom he's gonna come up with next week? That'd be brilliant. I will kinda, yeah. No, but what I'm saying Your is, blood's paranoid. <laughs> we were talking- You've got jealous bones. <laughs> You're the sort of person whose stomach's hungrier than you. <laughs> what absolute fucking nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know like how we were talking about eyes, weren't we? He said, uh, he said the thing is, you know, you've got to be able to relax and uh, the way to do it is to focus. Right? He said, uh, so what do you mean? He said, when you go to sleep... You're the sort of person whose eyes can see further than you can. <laughs> he said, when you go to sleep, uh Close your eyes and see it. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of just leaving them open staring at the ceiling. Carl, keep breathing. <laughs> yeah, keep breathing, close your eyes, you're not dead. It may seem like it, but you're not. You're just asleep. So he said, uh... Oh, fuck me. He said, he said, what you've got to do when you go to sleep, focus on your toe. Right? He said, I'm just thinking about nothing <laughs> else. I said, He's a witch! <laughs> didn't he? Did, did, did he even say he didn't put a toad under the bed? No, he just said, focus on the toe and mm. uh, see how you go on and what have you. Next time you come in, let me know. Anyway, I gave this a go, focusing on the toe. Uh, so, what does this mean? You mean you sat in bed staring at your toes? No, this is it. He, he said, like, lie down, shut it. your eyes and, and sort of look at it, sort of thing. So, I was lying there. It just wasn't working because... Oh, Carl, this isn't medicine! Because I was... You were, even though you were thinking of his finger. Well, no, it... <laughs> <laughs> he found out he was thinking of someone else's toe. Yeah. Next it day someone work. called up and said, Carl, yeah. my toe's better. Yeah. No, the problem was, I was still using my eyes even though I had them shut. <laughs> Stupid. He pulls that one out of the bag. Right. So, so what does 
that mean? Oh, God! You were still playing uh, Stephen Amell in the What does that mean? I was straining him. I had him shut, but I was sort of looking <laughs> down at me. You were trying to see through your eyelids <laughs> at your toe. Well, I was, oh, I was looking down, so I'm thinking that's where the foot is. <laughs> because of that, I was straining him, and they were stinging, so I had to pack it in. I'm going to die! I am going to die! Again, we were talking about me being younger, and the youngest I could remember back to was 1978. How old were you then? Uh, when were you born? 72. What, you, can only, you couldn't remember earlier than six? Um, you can remember back to about two or three, most people. What, no, you... no way. No way. My mum and dad don't even remember me then. <laughs> <laughs> because you're not doing anything. This is what I'm saying. My mum and dad don't even remember me then. <laughs> That's amazing. Because oh they, God. they, they, they oh, pinpoint they things. They all the tic tacs <laughs> they remember yeah. really. Yeah, could you remember when Carl was uh, six? Of course I do. <laughs> Five? Yeah. Four? <laughs> yeah. Three? No. <laughs> Two? No! <laughs> because you're not doing anything, are you? <laughs> my mum and dad don't even remember so, me then! And, and it's oh, weird. I remember, I, must have been about two, sitting on a potty surrounded by Lego. I remember that, very st strong image I have of that. No, I don't remember that. So you no, remember no, no, that, no, no, were you? No, no, you, you weren't there, were you? What do you mean? What, you don't remember Steve sitting on a potty <laughs> surrounded by Lego? No, I mean, I can't remember having a potty. I remember having well, one of them. I'm not suggesting no, you have the you same memory. You used to go on a fucking litter tray. Now I know why to eat a Tic Tac while you're having a shit. But, um, okay, so what is your very first memory? The one that cropped up the other day was having my eyes sort of, uh, glued together by, um... <laughs> Gangsters. <laughs> Where's the fucking Tic Tacs? No. I we lost our trucks for you, yeah. When I, when I was on holiday and I slept near the window and the window was open and I used to wake up in the morning with my eyes shut. My mum and dad thought I was having a lovely lie in and I was just couldn't off my eyes. But why? I was like, why were they... Why, I'm gonna burst! Why, 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 why were they glued? Why were they... What do you mean they were glued? Wait, wait, but just, why didn't you say, Mum, Dad, I'm not asleep, my eyes are glued together! It's just, you get a build-up on, yeah. the, on the eyelashes. Yeah, yeah. And it all... It, <laughs> when they came in and you could sense them looking at you... I didn't know they were there. <laughs> but, anyway. Anyway, okay then, well, you were tested on, uh, Che Guevara. Right, Carl. We should just, hang on, we should just remind people what happened, because last This is a little series, I've got a lot of these little books, right, they're about, like, um, two and a half inches long by about, you know, two inches wide. Those tiny little things you see in the, sort of, on the front counter of Waterstones or Smiths, and it's, uh, The Life and Times, a series of all the great, all the greats in history. Uh, last week you read about Rasputin, you wasn't impressed. No. Uh, this, this week- This book's a little bit thicker than the Rasputin one. No, it's the same, I think, was it? Maybe the writing's so you're smaller. writing or something. Um, but, okay, Sha Che Guevara. Who was Che Guevara? Just, just, uh, now, you learnt to pronounce it, right? And how do you remember? You told me in the week how you remembered to, to what his name was. Che is like Shake, and his, his surname is like Guitar. Right. Shavara. Okay. Um, but anyway, <laughs> right, um... Tell us what you know and I'll, I'll, we'll ask. Right, first of all, um, his, his name isn't really Shay. Right. It was something else, and Shay means buddy okay. in, uh, wherever he's, from, uh, Argentina. Mm -hmm. okay. Right? Yeah. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Right, so anyway, he was born, and he was, uh... By the way, Carl's not reading this from a book now, this is all out of his own head. This is I just... not pre-planned notes. No, this is, this is, I mean, it's I know it real. sounds written, but he's just... Yeah. Right, here we this. go, here we go. Go on. Um, he was born, um... He, he had bad asthma as a kid, right? Which I thought was quite interesting because they didn't have cars and that back then, and that's what they're blaming asthma on these days. The bad, the bad build-up of traffic and that. Well, they so, did have cars, Carl. Not as many as they have now. Okay. Um, so that was that was something I picked up early yeah. in yep. the story. He uh, had asthma. Yeah. His dad, his dad was into poli. He wasn't a politician or anything, but he was, you know, they were into the politics. Sure. So he sort of grew up around a family who was into, you know, watching the news and that and keeping up to date on yep, what's going on yep. in the world. So that sort of rubbed off on him. He went to school, he was doing stuff on medicine. Yeah. Yeah, he wanted to be a doctor, or he thought he did. Yeah. Um, anyway, he, he learned really quick. He did like, uh, six months work in about three months. So he Impressive. could have some time off school or something. Right. So he, he took that time off. Yeah. And went to travel South America with his mate. Okay. On a motorbike. Yeah. Yeah. And he, uh, he saw all this bad going on in the world. He thought, oh, this, this is bad, this. Yeah. You know, I, I could sure. do something here. I could yeah. change this, make it a nicer place to live. So he, um, he said, what I'm going to do 
is, uh, join a gang right. that sort of, uh, is against the, uh, like the, like the government. Yeah. Right. Right. Am I right so far? Yeah. You're doing very well. Right. And, and the woman who he met, who was like running this gang, is a woman called Ilda, who he later married. Right. And Ilda introduced him to Castro. Right. Who was like the, the like the head cheese of the gang. Right. Who wanted to change things. Okay. And, um, so, uh, she said, like, this is, this is, uh, I think his real name was Eng Engelbert or something like that. Ernesto. What? Ernesto. Ernesto. She said, this is Ernesto. He does medicine. Should have him in our, in our sort of army. Yeah. So when there's injuries and that, he can, he can make people better. Yeah. So he says, yeah, all right then. So he joined the gang and they went like, uh, went, went to sort of, I'm chopping it down a bit. This no, 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 sure, 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 sure. You're, 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 no, you're condensing it's this. It's not, thing. it's not in real time. No. So, uh, <laughs> so anyway, so they go It feels the, like it. <laughs> So this is why I just wanted to ask you to ask me questions. Well, listen, let me cut to the, let's cut to the chase then. So, okay. um, obviously well, he made his name as part of the, uh, Cuban Revolution. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you know what date that was? <sighs> About, uh, no, I don't Okay. And, uh, obviously, so, uh, he, he was, he, he had a big involvement in that. Yeah. Um, well, what, where, where, which country was he, um, was he caught? He was caught in Bolivia. Yeah. Uh, how did he die? They executed him. Yeah. He shot him, and his last words before he died, right, the, the guy's there with the gun. Huh. And he, w he wasn't scared. He didn't, he wasn't like crying or anything. He said to the bloke with the gun, he said, go on, shoot me. Uh, be a man. Yeah. He said. Yeah. And they shot him. And yeah. did, did it tell you what happened to him after that, his dead body? No, but Suzanne was telling me about this the other night. She said there's more to it than that. They stuck it in a... In a in a glass coffin, didn't yeah, they? So, well, yeah. well, no, but before that, they cut off his hands and his oh, feet, feet and sent them to. The uh, no, 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 and that, because they and they buried them in different places, and then they buried the body. I think they might have sent the hands to chat to uh, Fidel, but uh, they they buried him in an unmarked grave because they didn't want anyone to um, start using his his grave or his tomb as a place martyrdom. of martyrdom. But of course, that just made him even more of a martyr because no one knew where he was buried, so it just meant that he was yeah, even more. Yeah, but that would work anyway because if they did find out, that's more places people can go and sort of grieve. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If Genius. you've got all these different graves... What, with different parts of his body? Oh, you've got a foot over there and it's like, well, you know, oh God. His head over there. Thanks for what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, so, so, so all in all, all so in all, essentially, what's your summary of Che? <laughs> yeah, uh, you like him more than Rasputin, don't you? A lot better bloke than Rasputin. I can understand why he, he gets one of those little books. Um, well worth knowing about and, um, good bloke. Did a lot, you know. Crammed a lot into his short life. Yeah. But, um, yeah, interesting bloke. But um, just just on the subject of uh, Che Guevara, um, Steve called me up in the week because he was going through the, the duty log. We love the complaints on the BBC duty log, and someone had written in because one of the Blue Peter presenters was wearing a Che Guevara T-shirt. And what did the bloke say? Yeah, this is a, a series of people can phone in and, and write and uh, complain to the BBC about different things. Why would you complain about wearing some? Well, this is no. This it? was the thing: is you complain about the best. One, I mean, there's been some amazing complaints. Oh, there's there. some great ones. The, the best one, my favourite, my favourite one that wasn't a complaint but was actually just someone had to phone in was what an excellent edition of Kilroy this morning. <laughs> yeah, but it's like that. It's things like Esther was superb. <laughs> woman <laughs> call yeah, one. Woman called. Uh, there yeah. was a brilliant one I remember once, which was. Um, uh, Robbie Williams was wearing a Nike t-shirt on top of the pops last night. Product placement on the BBC. It's just all so things that are. Yeah. But anyway, this was, this was one phone call. There was a, a presenter on Blue Peter. She was wearing a t-shirt with Che Guevara's face on it. Right. And, um, someone had written in and said, uh, or someone had phoned in and said, very worried to see, uh, a presenter wearing, uh, Che Guevara's face on a t-shirt. Are you trying to turn my children into communist revolutionaries? Yeah. Imagine that. Imagine who's thinking that. Who's bothering to phone up with that information, Carl? Yeah. Who knows what they're going to say about this show? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you've look. been championing the work of uh, communist revolution. Luckily, luckily, no one listening to this show can either write or operate a phone, <laughs> so I think we're pretty safe. So, so thumbs up, Che Guevara. Yeah. Well done to Carl there. Yeah, no, I uh, thought he was even brilliant. Right, but the thing yeah, is, that, you, that, you keep saying to us you don't understand why history is interesting, and yet you're clearly interested by that. You, you remember that Carl, information. Do you, I've got another. Yeah. I've got. I've got a few in the series. Uh, can I give you your next week's homework? Go on. There you go. Oh. Read it out. Hitler. <laughs> Hitler. The life and times of Hitler. 1889 to 1945. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know much about him? What was the significance of that last date? Why did he, what was what, that last date, Carl? Why do you think he died in 1945? End of the war. Yeah. <laughs> which I'm interested in. So this, yeah. this will have stuff about Anderson shelters and that. <laughs> <laughs> it, might, it might not be covered in the Hitler 
um, biography, the Anderson Shelter, but... Just I mean, check if there's a special Anderson, uh, <laughs> chapter. Anderson <laughs> Shelter chapter. Anderson Shelter chapter. I'll look forward to this. Yeah, be, yeah. Be interesting. Uh, Powdered Egg is page four. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Well, right. we're gonna play a hip-hop. Yeah, we're it's time for a hip-hop hooray. Um, people are absolutely in love with this feature, Rick, as you well know, and I know you're somewhat jealous of it. Yeah. Uh, this week, I know that Outcast are currently on the playlist, aren't they, with their new single, Whole of the World, is that yep. what, the whole world? Anyway, this is a track, uh, from the big compilation, Outcast. Uh, it's just a sort of compilation of all their greatest hits, and uh, this is a good one. It's called Rosa Parks. Play it, Carl. From their greatest hits album, uh, that's Outcast, and a track called Rosa Parks. Like it, like it. Yeah, enjoy yeah. it. Yeah. Now, we just had a call, uh, from someone, uh, impressed by Carl, and Carl's very pleased because this guy has actually done a PhD on Che Guevara. So in theory, whatever subject he chose, in theory, he's probably one of the experts in the world on this particular field. Now, hello, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hello, what's your name? My name's David. David, now, you, now where did you do your PhD? Did at UCL. Did at UCL, mild, mild college. And what was the actual title of the PhD? It was uh, Che Guevara's influence on class struggle in uh, Europe in the 60s. And what did you think of Carl's performance? And I his, thought he his... did really, really well. The only thing I'd never heard those last words before. So, so Carl <laughs> actually knows something you don't know. Yeah, possibly. Although <laughs> you presumably not take that as verified information. You'd probably, you probably wouldn't take everything Carl said uh, as gospel. You'd probably look it up yourself, would you? I probably would have a look, did, yeah. Did you know about baby's eyes? Sorry? Did you know that baby's eyes don't grow? I didn't know that. You see, that's why you shouldn't take yeah. things Carl says as, uh, as gospel. Because it, it come out with something, you know, m you know, vaguely uh, intelligent, and then say, "Did you know about baby's eyes don't grow?" Um, any uh, any questions that you'd want to test Carl on? Any uh, thoughts? Any things he missed there on the uh, history of Che Guevara? I think he did really well, and uh, I, I think I think he should be congratulated. What? Uh, no, because because Carl has problems with understanding why people are interested in history, and well, even though he's been reading these books, he keeps saying, "Why does anyone care about history? Why is it important?" What would you say to uh, Carl? I think he should maybe then look at who Che Guevara did influence and why he still influences people today. Yeah. yeah. Well, he, well, he knows that he influenced um, Citizen Smith, uh, and he knows that if McDonald's ever wanted to swap uh, Ronald McDonald for Che Guevara, it would cost him an awful lot of money. <laughs> so he is trying to p apply it to the modern world. He's, he is having a go. Well, maybe you should think like why Rage Against the Scene have him on, on their T-shirts. Good point, oh. Carl. Why do you think of that? Why do you think they have him on the T-shirts, Carl? I, thought, I don't know. Maybe that's. That was the design of the T-shirt. Maybe they wanted another T-shirt. Maybe they wanted Ronald McDonald. <laughs> but didn't have any in. Sure. And they said, oh, we'll have that one there. Then. <laughs> well, thanks very much. Um, Dave, just, to, just before you go, do, do you think Carl would be an interesting subject for a PhD? Yeah, very much so, yeah. Okay, well, yeah. um, well, if, if you know, if you know... Well, hopefully one day you'll become a professor and you can maybe set that as some uh, coursework. Do, yeah. Carl Pilkington. Imagine that. Cheers, Dave. Imagine having an MA in Carl Pilkington. <laughs> thanks very much, Dave. Okay, bye. Cheers, bye. That's right. good. My teachers never did that. What encouraged you in that never, way? Never said well done. So really? Yeah. But you never showed up. Yeah, they, they, no, you have to be in the same room. They were really. just <laughs> saying, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but me, Mrs. Matthews, me, me head teacher. Oh, sure. let's not lay into Matthews again. Oh, not, getting a not Matty she Matthews. Says, not not never, Grimble Matty Matthews. I'd never be a high flyer. D d if she could see you now. That, what did she say? She, you'll never be a high she, flyer? She said that to me, mum and dad. On, really? On a parents' evening. <laughs> What and that was after I'd played the drums in Little Donkey. <laughs> <laughs> she clearly didn't know what she was talking about. <laughs> <laughs>